This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Right, hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at this Xbox One uh, which seemingly has an issue with its disk feed mechanism. So at the moment the machine is off you can see the power brick light there is amber. If we go to offer the disc up, the machine does indeed turn on, but we get absolutely no disc feed at all. You can see there that the, uh, the machine just refuses to take the disc. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you what happens when this uh, particular fault occurs and how you can get around it. So what we'll do is we'll get the drive out of this machine. We'll disassemble the drive. We'll get the PCB uh, daughter logic board from the drive and we'll see you back on the desk underneath the microscope and we'll show you what goes wrong and how you can fix it. Right, okay then ladies and gentlemen so we have our Xbox Blu-ray drive board out of our machine now so we've dismantled the Blu-ray drive and we have the board out. It's fairly straightforward there's four screws underneath the Blu-ray drive itself which are posi drive um, Underneath a strip of the sort of fabric metal tape as well, you'll find two more. So there's four in total, two at the back and two at the front. And then there are three small screws on the drive board itself. You remove those, you remove the cables from the, uh, the cable connectors, and you've got to desolder the rear uh, two leads there, the B and R for black and red. And then the drive board will simply slide out of the drive and you can have it here on your table like we've got it here. So what we have here is the actual main processor of the Blu-ray drive. It's an ARM processor, it's custom Microsoft Silicon and it is this chip which is responsible for marrying the Blu-ray daughter board to your particular Xbox. So in the event you have a catastrophic board failure, it's this IC here that you need to be swapping onto a donor and uh, just to give you an idea of where it is just here are the connectors for the laser ribbon and the drive motors so just up from there is where you'll find that IC it looks like a QFN to my eye uh, so it actually has no leads the uh, solder around the edge just sits against those pads around the edge of the chip so uh, you know it's not as easy as a conventional IC to replace but it shouldn't be too bad the pads look fairly big so uh, if you ever do, do need to swap that you should be fine but that's not what we're here for today we're actually here to swap out uh, the problematic component which is stopping our xbox from feeding and ejecting dvds blu-rays and game discs and what we're going to do is have a quick look around and what you will notice uh, is that there's a lot of capacitors and resistors but there isn't much else small voltage regulator there but other, otherwise this drive board is actually free of res, uh, fuses and everything else it actually doesn't really have any if you go down past the laser ribbon connector there there's the drive ribbon connector there uh, down the bottom here there's a switch for the sensing mechanism there is uh, another cable there But yeah, otherwise another little voltage regulator there, but there's nothing else really that you can swap. So unlike the PS3, there isn't uh, any fuses or anything to check on this board as such. But what does cause the issue then? What, what is the actual issue and what is responsible for causing it? Well, if you have a look here, this small connector next door, next door to the uh, laser ribbon connector, is actually where the drive motor plugs in. So the drive spindle motor that spins the disc is here and that piggybacks onto another motor for the worm. And essentially what happens here is if you follow the traces back, back down, back past here, you can see they all end up going to this little Texas Instruments and it looks like a 3CT A929 uh, processor there. It's a, actually a motor regulator IC, motor controller IC. And it's actually this component. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift uh, the actual chip from here and we're going to swap it onto our board. Now to save you a little bit of faffing about, I've already taken that board there's actually a donor. I've already taken the motor controller off 
of our original board, which is here. So all we actually need to do now is replace our uh, motor controller IC, which we've already removed here, with the one from this donor board, which is just here. So we're going to remove that, and hopefully that's going to be enough to get our drive back in the land of the living again. So we're just going to apply some flux Oops, to this IC. I forgot I was doing that under the camera for you guys. Then. That would have been... <laughs> Ooh, wouldn't it be easier to drag this towards me and do it there? Why am I doing it over there? I don't remember it. Oh, yeah, I'm filming it. So, <laughs> so it's been a long day. It's been a long day, but uh, we'll get there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to secure this board down to the desk with some tape. That just stops it moving while we have it away from us here. So, for those of you familiar with the PS4, of course, the PS4 does have a very similar IC. It's actually a Rome branded IC in the PS4. And it's a BDV7763 controller. Looks very similar to this one in the older sort of fat PS4. On the 1200s and newer, it's actually a QFN style. So we're just going to put some fume extraction on. We've got some flux on our IC. So we're going to get the hot air. And we're going to get a pair of tweezers. Trying to work out where my kink tweezers have gone. I can't actually see them kicking around the desk, which is odd, considering I know I've had them fairly recently. So all you need to do is just walk around the legs of the chip. And you're watching for them going shiny. Shouldn't take too long. These are only thin boards. You can notice this one's starting to want to come already. Proving to be a bit of a nightmare without the proper tweezers. <laughs> I don't recommend you use straight ply uh, straight tweezers for lifting ICs like that. Oh, I've just found them now. Ideally, you want to be using these sort of kinked, really fine needle nose ones. And the reason for that is because you can actually get the kink underneath the leg and just gradually lift it and get a hold of the other side of the leg here so you can actually get a proper firm hold of it and just lift it away which of course we were struggling a little bit there with those straight ones so I'm going to show you underneath here now I'm just going to get rid of the donor now then what we're going to do is we're going to just check to make sure that all of our legs are straight and that we have no bridging going on so that's next up so let's have a nice look here see what we have so we're going for the top row first nice and straight no bridges bottom row nice and straight but we do have a bridge on this end so what we have here is some really really fine solder braid this is Soderwick Chemtronics size number one I'm going to stop being lazy. Okay. There we go. So that's the bridge removed. And all our legs are nice and straight. So we've now bridges and we've got some nice straight legs. So now we're going to bring our original board back in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply some flux to our original board. Uh, 
We're just going to roughly offer this IC up in place where it needs to go. And then we're going to roughly tack it into place. So at this point we don't need anything too precise. We just need to get it offered up to the board. We can work on adjusting the position in a sec. Just want to make sure I get this in focus and in view for you. Okay. These boards are really, really thin, so they don't take any sort of time to flow the joints. And as you can see there now, we have our IC in place. It does appear that we've managed to nudge. small cap okay so we just managed to nudge this little cap here I'm not sure if we did it when we lifted the old IC or not to be honest but uh, just put that back in the right position and everything else there now as you can see is looking nice and straight so if in doubt what you can do is give these pins the nudge test. Now there's a lot of pins, so what you can do if you hold the board stiff with the edge of a pair of tweezers, go across each pin, look for movement. As you can see, those all stay put. Okay, we have one moving. Other than that, Not too bad, so that's that line there. So I'm just going to nudge it back into position. Pin's nicely soldered there now. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, we're done. So we'll put this uh, drive board back in our Xbox, fire it up, let's see what it does. Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we have the Xbox partially reassembled now. And of course, this is after we've replaced our Texas Instruments motor controller IC on our Blu-ray drive board. And remember before, the machine wouldn't actually take any discs in. Well, we have the same Thief disc here. And let's see what happens now. So the machine's powered on. You can see that. It's now fed the disc. Just make sure that it's actually reading. If we go up there, we can indeed see Thief is installing. If we go into games and apps on the machine, go down to Q, we can see there that Thief is installing. currently at five percent and there we go it's working away nicely there 5.1 5.2 and it's off and running so as we can see there now we have our xbox back up and running and everything is working absolutely perfectly again there now so that was a nice easy one in the end uh, and it's uh, it's a problem that thankfully isn't all that common to be honest with you um, but if you do get it, then that is what causes it. There's no fuses of anything on the board in particular that you need to check. It's just a case of replacing that motor controller I see. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll put a link into the description with the part number of that TI chip. And hopefully we can find somewhere to buy them. Uh, if not, then obviously donor boards, uh, you know, bad Blu-ray drives from 
Other Xboxes will have that chip in that you can take it from if you need to. That's where we got ours. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, it would be nice to find a, a part supplier for them. So if I can, then I'll buy some and I'll stock them and you can come to me for them if you like. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to find something. Uh, to find a, a find a source for them, but if not, like I say, old drives, broken drives are your best bet for them. So as we can see there, everything is now working lovely. We're on 9.4%, 9.5% and climbing. Our Xbox is back working again, and uh, ultimately, this one we can add to the list of uh, finished consoles, and it can go back to its owner. Happy days. So. Like I say, ladies and gentlemen, I do offer my services out. If you're in the UK or the EU and you would like a repair, then you can hit me up at ytandrewpaul at outlook.com. That email address is in the description of the video and you can look me up there. And like I say, if you need a quote for a repair, or indeed if you need any console components for PS4, Xbox One or anything, MacBooks, stuff like that, then again, feel free to drop me a email to that address and I'll see what I can do for you. Uh, we do ship parts and components worldwide. So if you're in the US, then like I say, I may be, be able to uh, source you some, port, some parts uh, for a very reasonable cost. Um, like I say, if you've got a console or a MacBook in need of repair in the UK or the EU, then feel free to drop me a message and I'm sure we can uh, arrange you a repair for a very reasonable cost too. And uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have any questions or comments on the video, feel free to pop them below. Or you can hit me up on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at YTAndrewPaul. And uh, indeed there, my DM box is open to everybody. So if you have any questions or you'd like to send me a message in private, then you can do so on there. So uh, if you enjoyed it, and I hope you have, and you found this useful, then please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've had 80 videos on there now, and uh, most of them are for repairing things like this on games, consoles, and MacBooks, and various other bits and pieces of electronics. Uh, so, you know, if you like this sort of video, and you like watching us tinker with this sort of thing, then I promise you, you might like a few other bits and pieces we've got on there, and a few other bits and pieces we've got coming up as well, because I promise you there'll be lots more to come. Uh, from what we've got on there already. So as I say, ladies and gentlemen, if you've liked this video and you found it useful, please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and from me, from the Xbox and its Blu-ray drive, which is now happy and working again, uh, it's a very good day, and uh, hopefully life treats you well. Until the next video, uh, and until the next video, it's from me, it's bye-bye for now. Many thanks for watching then ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate and of course subscribe to the channel if you found this useful, we've plenty more content on there and there's lots more to come.